This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Today we're getting right into it. We're making some ring lights. We are going to have the index do some actual useful population work. Oh hey, if you're completely lost and have no idea what's going on, we're building an open source pick and place. If you want to catch up on all the previous episodes, I made a playlist right here so you can catch up. We've had it populate certain footprints on boards before as a validation effort with multiple different feeders and vision alignment and all that stuff, but I actually need to make a bunch of ring lights right now. <laughs> in an upcoming video, I will be using a bunch of indexes to make motherboards. And in order to make all those indexes, I need to make some ring lights. So I'm gonna set up the index to just populate them for me. Let's do it. Okay, so I just realized that I do have a bunch of ring light boards, but I don't have a solder paste stencil for it. I could have sworn when I bought these boards, I bought a stencil as well, but I didn't. I could just manually dab a little bit of paste on each pad, but I want this to be the full stack. I want to use a solder paste stencil. I want to place the boards. I want to reflow them. Like, I want to do the full thing for this. So I'm going to try and make my own. <laughs> I think because these pads are pretty big, I can get away with it with an X-Acto knife in a film. We'll see. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> I forgot, I need to make some ring lights. All done.
<laughs> it does the thing! Full stack! Solder paste stencil, picked and placed, completely, no help from me, just did the whole thing by itself, and then directly from the machine into the reflow oven. Taking out what I got from the machine and putting it right in, and off we go. It's so cool! It's so cool! I was pretty damn happy with the placement of these NeoPixels on their pads. There was a very slight offset in some of the placements, which I attribute to me not setting some of my full machine offsets properly. There's a lot of different measurements you need to tell OpenPMP, kind of the reference of where things are in relation to each other. So for example, it needs to know where the top camera is in relation to the nozzle, and there's a calibration procedure for that. There's also understanding where the top camera is in relation to the bottom camera and where the top nozzle is in relation to the bottom camera. You can see how some tolerances start to stack up if you're off by just a little bit. It starts to get messy quick. So you need to be really accurate with those calibrations so that it knows where things are in space so it can do all of its math correctly. After going through this process of setting up four boards within one job and having it run through a whole bunch of NeoPixels at a whole bunch of different orientations, it really does show me how much those offsets are really the biggest thing that you need to make sure are just dead on. Because no matter how much it will try and adjust with the vision pipeline and it thinks it's perfectly centered with the top camera, if it doesn't know where the nozzle is in space or it thinks the bottom camera is in the wrong place, it's never going to place it accurately. OpenPMP has a lot of wizards built in for specifically doing this. I really like the wizard for finding the offset from a nozzle to the camera. You put a little bit of putty on some surface on your focal plane for the down camera, and you take your tip and you just boop, poke a little circle into the putty, and then you bring your camera over it, and you center it on that little spot that you left in the putty, and whatever distance you traveled between those two movements, that's your offset. It's pretty cool. OpenBMP is an awesome piece of software. <laughs> I also recently changed out a 3D printed air manifold for an actual proper pneumatic coupling. And what that means is that the leakage of the vacuum pressure inside the line is way less. That is good because it means we get a ton more vacuum pressure and we're able to pick up a lot bigger stuff with a much smaller nozzle diameter. But it also means that if we have a really good seal on the part, it just kind of holds a vacuum. If I pick up a NeoPixel with a nozzle and I turn off the vacuum, it will literally just stay attached to the nozzle tip for, I don't know, maybe two full seconds or something. It's a long time for the air to slowly leak back in. For this reason, a valve is super important to have in this setup that immediately evacuates all the vacuum inside the line when you want to release a part from the nozzle. I have one, I just need to set things up to do it. Uh, for this test, I just had a really long delay time to let the vacuum eke its way out, but I have a valve, I've tested it, it works so well for immediately releasing all of the pressure, it's really cool. So next up is adding that into my OpenPMP config just to make things happen a lot faster. I'm also running the machine at a pretty conservative speed right now because I'm trying to hit in accuracy and just see what the best capability of it is and have it stretch its legs and doing the full stack of a population on multiple boards. After that gets dialed in, we're turning up the knob and we'll see how fast it can go. With some 2209 stepper drivers, I'm pretty excited to push it to its limits. I know it only populated one component onto it and it's a pretty big one, but it did it accurately. It did it well without a hiccup. It's the full stack. It assembled this board sans this connector. But I could also just print out another little tray for these connectors and place them all in there or, you know, with an automated feeder, just put some tape. I think you can get these with tape and have it pick that as well. That's so cool. Frick. I'm not surprised. I knew it could do this. I've placed NeoPixels this accurately before. I've placed 0805s this accurately before in a previous video where I was testing on a glow tie board. I know it's capable of doing this, but to actually have it do useful work for me, I didn't have to solder these boards. It did it for me. That's cool. <laughs> That's so cool. So next up is making three more machines and getting them set to populate motherboards. In the last episode, Gonzalo and I showed off the Rev3 Beta 1, the first beta pass that we have at the Rev3 motherboard. As I shoot this right now, we have the second beta in the mail on the way. This is fixing all the little bugs that we found in the first beta. I'm pretty much just getting this board in to confirm all those changes were fixed, and then we're gonna release it as an official Rev3. Then I'm gonna take those three machines that I built up and have them populate those Rev3 motherboards. So the next episode is going to be me building up three machines and talking about some of the challenges that Lucian and I have faced trying to source components. Actually assembling and building your product is not the only thing that's weird at mid-scale manufacturing. Talking with vendors and trying to get good price breaks at like kind of a medium to low quantity is really challenging. So the next episode will be going into that and how we've been trying to source materials to be able to make a bunch of kits, make a bunch of machines. 
Anyway, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay manufactured the Motherboard Rev 3 Beta 1 that I have right here, and they're also making the Beta 2 that I have coming in the mail. This thing is a freaking beaut. It's an absolutely lovely board. The solder mask art on the back came out super crisp, even though it's pretty small. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Oh my god, I'm so hot in this f Oh dear lord in heaven, take me away sweet air conditioning. Take me away.